Jim Rogers is a legendary global investor and was way ahead of the curve on the bull market in commodities. He's very bullish on an emerging investment that gets little attention. We're going to get to that. But first, his thoughts on perhaps some of the more pressing matters of the day. Jim Rogers joins us from Frankfurt, Germany. Jim, we know that you're a critic of Ben Bernanke. We also know in the last couple of weeks we've been hearing a lot about Operation Twist. What do you make of Operation Twist as a strategy to help the U.S. economy? I don't pay any attention to it. Bernanke's in there printing money again. He's already started quantitating easing again. He announced in early August that he was going to keep interest rates low. Uh, you cannot do that, Rhonda, unless you're in the market. You can't just say the words, Rhonda, interest rates will stay low. You have to be in there. And if you don't believe the, how monetary theory works, just go and look at the M2 numbers. Starting at the beginning of August when he said that, M2 numbers jumped up. A monetary base jumped up a lot. So he's in the market. He's manipulating the market. He's flooding the market with money again. None of this is going to do well, do good things for the U.S. It's all going to end very badly. Before it ends, I'm sure there are a lot of people who would like to capitalize on some way to make money. What do you think about treasuries anywhere on the yield curve, and what about the U.S. dollar? Well, I, I actually own the U.S. dollar as we speak, Rhonda. Everybody's terribly bearish on the dollar, including me. When everybody's so bearish, I have learned to go to the other side of the boat for a while, so I own, I own the dollar. And there are things that could happen. I mean, Congress may give incentives for American corporations to bring their money back home. So there are things that could make the dollar go higher for more than a week or a month or a year. I own the dollar. Treasuries, I'm waiting to short. I've shorted them a couple of times too soon. That's one of the bubbles that exist in the world. Now, of course, I wish I'd owned a bubble. I will own this bubble all this time. But treasuries are going to be one of the great shorts of our time if and when the timing is right. I, I'm not very good at market timing. I'm a hopeless trader, as I proved to myself many times. In terms of the dollar, was that a position you added, or did you sell something to buy dollars? Well, I, yeah, I sold euros. I sold, uh, no, not euros. I sold some, uh, some Swiss francs. I sold, what did I sell? I sold a few currencies to buy dollars. I'm not quite sure what exactly. I know I sold some Swiss francs, which I'm now thinking about buying back. Maybe some yen. Uh, I, I forget exactly what I, from probably some euros. I'm sure I sold some euros. Uh, to, to buy my dollars. So in terms of dollar and treasury, would you say that you're looking at that frequently over the next couple of weeks? I know you're waiting for some other indication. Um, do you have any sort of timing thoughts in your head? I know you don't like to talk about timing it, but I'm trying to figure out what would precipitate a move either way. Well, I guess if, if bonds spiked straight up, I would have to, that would be a good sign to, to, short, to, to short them again. If the dollar collapsed for some reason, that would be a, a sign to buy some more dollars. Or if the dollar shot straight up, if it spiked up, I'd have to sell it. <coughs> but no, the answer to your question is no. It just depends on how the world evolves and what happens. If Congress should pass or somebody should pass a law encouraging people to bring money back to the country, then obviously I would probably even buy more dollars. Let's shift away from the U.S. for a moment. Obviously, everyone is talking about a possible Greek default. Do you expect that will happen? And are you worried the consequences could be greater than some are anticipating? Well, I hope the Greek defaults would be good for Europe, it would be good for Greece, it would be good for the world, it would be good for the Euro. If they finally accepted reality and made Greece uh, default, made people who made the bad loans uh, take their losses, and they made that happen to a couple of other countries, Everything would go down a lot, uh, Rhonda, but that would be such a magnificent buying signal. I would buy all the euros I could at that point because then we would know we're going to have a sound currency. We're going to have a, a strong euro. It's not going to happen, but if it happened that way, wow, then we would have a serious competitor to the U.S. dollar. Will we have a global recession, do you think, because of what's happening in Europe, because of what's happening in the U.S.? Rhonda, we're going to have a global recession because, because, because. I mean, every four to six years in America, we've had economic slowdowns and recessions. We're overdue late in 2011, 2012, 2013. It's coming for whatever reason. We always have had them for every four to six years. So we're going to have one again. Part of the main problem is 
In America, we spend a lot of money, and the people who got that money, Rhonda, are better off, but the rest of us are worse off. The debt has gone up staggeringly by staggering amounts, maybe 400% when you take in the, the off-balance sheet guarantees. The Fed has printed huge amounts of money. No, there are many things wrong that are just getting worse, not better. It's like in Japan. They kept propping people up, and they had a lost decade. Then they had two lost decades. We're going to have at least one. We've had one lost decade. We're going to have another one, too. And is we're that— We're making a horrible— Go ahead. We're making horrible mistakes in running the U.S. economy. Would you say the same for Europe, that there's a potential for a lost decade there if some of these issues don't get resolved the way you'd like to see them? Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, it'd be worse than a lost decade. You'll have lost one or two decades. You could have the disintegration of the of the euro. You could have the disintegration of the EU. Even I hope not. We certainly that would be a disaster for everybody. But if they keep doing the wrong things, if they keep, Rhonda, you know, you look at all the austerity plans in Europe. Every one of them show that the countries in five years will have higher debt than they have now. What kind of austerity is that? That's not austerity. It's inconceivable to me that the the solution to too much debt and too much spending is more debt and more spending, but that's what they're doing. No, this is going to get worse and worse and worse until somebody accepts reality and bites the bullet. How is that going to happen, though? It just seems that we keep talking about it. The market's been preparing for default of Greece for so long. We've been talking about problems with the pigs. It just seems that there's a lack of political will. Well, it's not just a lack of political will. The market lets them get away with it. The markets put pressure on them, then they, they step back. Eventually, Rhonda, the market's not going to put up with it anymore. And then, unfortunately, unless we have a controlled uh, disaster soon, when we still can contain it, we're going to have the market's going to say no more, <coughs> and then we're going to have an uncontrolled disaster. The banks, won't, the, the, the governments will not be able to control the, the chaos in the market. And then we're going to have something much worse in 2008 and 2009. The market's not going to put up with this forever. Why will it be much worse? Because the potential.